Good morning. My name is Joan Serrat and I am a professor at the Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya in Barcelona, Spain. Today I would like to give you an overview of ITSM as part of the dissemination activities that we carry out in the Flamingo project. Starting with the concept itself, ITSM consists of a set of procedures meant to plan, deliver and operate IT services. The final goal of ITSM is to reduce the capital expenditures and the operational expenditures required to implement and operate IT services. ITSM means to adopt a structure. A structure for everything you have to do in the whole service life cycle, since the conception of an IT service until its closure. ITSM is also an answer to what things I have to do and how I have to do these things. On the other hand, it is also important to understand since the beginning that ITSM doesn't mean that we have to follow one by one the receipts of a book because that book doesn't exist, although there are frameworks that we will have to look at to avoid uh, things like reinventing the wheel. In the same way, ITSM is not something that can be implemented buying or installing a wonderful tool because that tool doesn't exist, although tools will be in some cases a good support of our ITSM activities. Having said all this, our intuition is telling us that ITSM is something really important. And this is true, as supported by studies like this one I'm depicting in the slide, which reveals that a great percent of the reasons for IT service outages are due to failures of people trusted to provide the services or to the lack of inappropriate design of the adopted processes. This is in contrast to a relatively minor percent of causes that can be attributed directly to the failure of the technology. This is why establishing well-defined processes and educating people to use them is a key and the background of ITSM. Having that one in mind, it's worth it to say a few words on the concept of service from our perspective. If we provide a service to somebody else, which can be seen either as the customer or the user of that service, we will be giving value to this customer or user in the sense that we are helping him or her to achieve goals. As an example, imagine that we are providing mobile telephony to a pizza company. In this case, we realize that mobile telephony means value for that pizza company because we are facilitating the means through which clients will order pizzas and hence the pizza company will make business. As depicted in the slide, value can be seen as the addition of a utility and a warranty. In the previous example, the utility would be the technological means to provide the mobile telephony, base stations, mobile terminals, protocols and so forth. Whereas the warranty would be the assurance that this communication facility would be provided in detailed quality conditions, blocking probability, availability, contact point for customers, and so forth. The warranty component, materialized through a contract called a service level agreement, is precisely the subject of ITSM. To develop a good ITSM solution, we will have to keep in mind five key facts. In no particular order, as ITSM has to help the IT service customers to achieve their business goals, we have to understand the requirements of our customers and hence design the service operation in alignment with these customer needs. Hence, the interaction with the customer is essential. And a prerequisite to facilitate this interaction is the use of a consistent terminology as a means to avoid ambiguity and misunderstandings. Once customers' requirements and needs are clear, we have to design our ITSM solution, taking as reference one or several existing frameworks that provide guidance on the subject. The dilemma here is not to start from scratch and make use of the experience of others collected in different ways in existing ITSM frameworks. And the first outcome that will appear from the above activity will be the specification of a set of processes that altogether will constitute what we call a service management system. Processes and a management system as a collection of processes. Why a process-based approach? The reason is because having a well-defined process, we ensure that things are done in a way that has been proved to be effective and because things will be done repeatedly. The concept of process is quite straightforward. It can be seen as a sequence of activities aimed to produce some outcome. 
Observe that even if you are not aware of it, you would be really doing a process-based approach in spite that your processes were not well conceived or inspired in standard frameworks. To highlight the importance of a process-based approach, let's show an example in a completely different domain. If you were a football coach, you would consider two options to get better results. In one hand, you could try to improve the system of play of your team. In the other hand, you could try to hire better football players. The former is related to how to do things in the field, or in other words, the procedures to play in different circumstances. This is like what we do in IT service management. We put the emphasis on the how to do things and not in just improving or getting better resources. Related to the previous example, we can conclude that the system of play in IT management is the service management system that consists of a set of well-orchestrated processes, each dealing with a particular activity or problem domain, as well as other general management practices more related to the definition of top-level roles, responsibilities and policies. The set of processes constitute the core of the service management system. For this reason, it's worth it to devote a few words to better understand the structure of a process. Regardless of the problem domain that a given process is addressing, we can say that a management process has to specify four aspects, namely objective, constituting activities, inputs and outputs of the process, and the intervening roles and what these roles are each doing. For clarification of some of the constituting elements of a process, let's see an example. Assume we want to specify a process in the domain of incident management. The objective of such a process would be indeed the resolution of incidents. In other words, to restore the service quality to the levels established after the occurrence of an incident. Among the activities to be conducted to fulfill the above objective, we can mention the recording of the incident for later analysis, the assignment of a priority that will depend on the impact of the incident on the affected service or services, the resolution of the incident based on the information and expertise of the team that deals with the incident, or eventually the escalation to another team in case the incident resolution is above the competence of the former team. And finally, the closure of the incident. All these activities have to be conducted following defined and documented procedures. In respect to the inputs, we can mention the user calls that warn the incident management team and the problem and known error database that will allow the incident management team to deal with incidents making use of experience best based on past analyzed data. The main outcome of this process is indeed the restoration of the service, but in addition, we will have documents like the incident record that will be used for collection of statistics and further analysis. The team that will deal with the incidents will have clearly specified roles. Among these roles, we can mention the incident manager, whose duty will be the overall accountability of the process, and the incident owner that will be entrusted of a given incident since the moment it is detected until it is finally resolved. Processes will be each characterized by different inputs and outputs, but quite often the inputs and the outputs of the process are used in other processes. This means that the set of processes of a service management system will interact through clearly specified interfaces. In the picture, we can see the interaction of three processes, namely incident management, service reporting, and service level management. The former process produce incident records, which are used by the service reporting to elaborate service level reports, which in turn are fed to the service level management process that control the service level achieved that are used to trigger the activities of the incident management process in case they are below established thresholds. A simple but complete loop can then reflect the interaction between these three processes. From a practical point of view, the question is how to design the processes and other constituting elements of a service management system for a specified IT scenario. The answer goes through the use of existing standards and frameworks. Undoubtedly, the most popular one is the set of best, of best practices collected in five books and released by the British Cabinet Office and known as ITIL. But ITIL is not a standard, and looking for such, we have ISO IEC 20,000 family. 
The standard is based on ideal, but streamlined and mainly defining sets of minimum requirements to be fulfilled by a service management system. In addition to ITIL and ISO IEX standards, there are other frameworks and tools trying to cope with the disadvantages of the former two, mainly complexity and lack of scalability. Among these alternative approaches, I would like to say something about FITSM. FITSM is a practical approach to service management conceived in a project funded by the European Commission aiming to a lightweight implementation of ITSM. It was initially conceived for management of federated information technology services. Here is the origin of the acronym that stands for Federated IT Service Management, but later on adapted to be used in any type of service environment. The seven documents constituting the FITSM framework are supported in three levels. At level zero, we have defined a terminology to disambiguate and support all the terms used through all the remaining documents. The grounding level of FITSM is in reality level one, and it consists of a unique document describing the sets of minimum requirements that have to be fulfilled in general by a service management system, and also for each one of the 14 processes envisaged. These requirements are inspired in ISO IEC 20000. The last level of FITSM grows on the former and is meant to develop the implementation of the requirements. It consists of five documents addressing the activities that have to be fulfilled and the roles that have to be implemented. A set of templates for documents to be created and maintained and guides for procedures that are not easily implementable through predefined templates. These documents are, have been inspired in ITIL. But uh, last but not least, there is a document that consists of an assessment tool to help service providers to understand their actual capability levels in all the requirements of each process and help them to plan roadmap for improvement. In this slide, we see how the different constituting documents of FITSM play a specific role in the design life cycle of a service management system. FITSM 0 and 1 help the designer to understand what he has to achieve. FITSM 2 and 3 help to understand what has to be done, that is, activities, and who has to do each one, that is, roles. FITSM 4 and 5 help to understand how to do things and how to write the necessary documents. Finally, FITSM 6 helps to check where we are or what we have achieved after some time of work. One of the advantages of FITSM is, in comparison with ITIL, it is simplicity and easily understanding and implementation. As a matter of fact, in terms of the number of pages that constitute each framework, the reduction is apparent. About two orders of magnitude, FITSM is smaller than ITIL. FITSM is the result of the continuous effort of the FITSM project where we can find at ITSM consultants and service providers that work together to adapt FITSM to broader and broader scenarios. I invite you to visit the webpage of the FITSM project and if you want to learn more, don't hesitate to contact me or any other of our, my colleagues. Thank you.